Hello everyone, welcome to jobskillshare.org, our course help this support entry level to specialist. We are going to go in and go to section advanced troubleshooting skills right here. Advanced troubleshooting, we already have a section advanced troubleshooting by Microsoft, but it's more text related stuff. We are making today a video. And remember, my video are not about just tool it's not about just one specific thing it's about an idea or the process or making your mind opening to something new so if you don't know about these things maybe after this video you will have more uh, understanding about how to troubleshoot some issues now let me start with this that anything that I try in this video any tools that I try in this video or any video I don't just endorse it or anything like that it's just that I like it I'm being comfortable with it so don't just take this tool and say you know what this is the only thing that I will be using take an idea take the process and try to see if you can find other tools to do the same process because you already know you have this tool now you can find other ones to kind of make yourself better with troubleshooting stuff now this video can be useful for anyone who is troubleshooting windows P uh, pcs or servers uh, microsoft servers so let's get started before I start this, I would like to tell you guys that please try all these software stuff on a machine that is temporary virtual machine where if something messed up, I am not responsible for it. So let's get started now. All right, go ahead and go to google.com. Whoops. Google.com and type Windows inspection tool set I already downloaded it you can just go to this link or the first link I'm going to go to the main link where it is and it's basically says this is the name you can go to the files right here go to Windows inspection tool set and here it says 3.2.2 and click on the release and say let's say you are using a 64-bit system you will be using this one if you're using a 32-bit system you'll be using this one to find out your system you click on your machine right click on your computer or system in your machine click on properties scroll down and then you'll see 64-bit or 32-bit that's how you will find out your machine if it's uh, what type of processor and things like that alright so you install this I already did it like I said this is the this is the icon right here okay so this is how it looks you're just going to double click on it and it will open up I'm just gonna go ahead and close everything and it will show you this it might prompt you that it needs an admin rights yes you, you need an admin right to run this type of tools because it's going to access processes and things like that just a basic overview for this tool and what it does it, it basically can give you a lot of information when you open it so you can have this tool somewhere let's say for example you're working with a network guy or sysadmin or some other person and this server is maintained by you in some remote area where he called you and he's asking you can you tell me the OS um, operating system for this uh, server you can just click on the OS and then you can find more information by sharing this operating system stuff also uh, you can basically click on the kernel and if someone wants to go in details kinda like that memory they might ask you that and BIOS and they might say hey you know what what BIOS are you running on this machine can you tell me what version it is you can just say this right here so these are the real scenarios that I'm just kinda telling you guys and this is not the troubleshooting part right now but it's just what this software can do so you can click on the CPU and it will tell you the CPU stuff like right here processes normal stuff that you can access from right clicking go to task manager and stuff like that you can also achieve from just windows without even using this tool but this tool goes in a little bit more detail so you can click on this right here like DWM process and if you go to the properties it gives you all this stuff and then it basically goes to the connections which is pretty cool stuff and tell you what type of connection is it using now of course this is not using any connection so you will see nothing so I'm gonna close this and then I'm gonna go to drivers it basically tell you what drivers are in use right now all that stuff right there pretty cool stuff right 
now you can go on and find a little more information in this but my video is more about troubleshooting today and troubleshooting in a sense where I want you guys to understand and kind of know how we do troubleshooting if it if it comes to a point where I don't want to image this machine images and like you know I can't just go and grab a copy of an image and say you know what I'm going to put it on this machine and this issue is resolved yes that works most of the time but in some cases it might not be a, a, a something that you can do it could be overall on 300 machines and you think that it's a small issue there's a fix for it I just need to find it and then I can deploy it through software deployment and things like that and this issue will be fixed because you can't just say there's an issue going on I can't solve it and I know I can fix it by image I'm just going to deploy 300 images that's not going to work for you most of the time so how do we do that so let's say I'm just gonna go ahead and give you guys some examples on how to log your uh, system what is it doing now the most important part in in my experience is that when it comes to troubleshooting it's about logs it's about when you know what's going on behind the scenes that's what I like I am good at it I'm good in this kind of stuff where where I know that things are happening when I click on it where does really things are happening that's where you can get a lot of information rather than just looking on the front page and the browser or some application and not knowing what's going on so there's two ways you can do this and most of the application have their logs set up they have logs for it and this is where an, a good application where let's say if you're using a VMware or if you're using some kind of uh, uh, web app they have logs uh, files in their system so if there's something happening somebody access it there's an error going on there's an access issue it logs it to that folder and then you can see and go back and check the logs now this is something that most of sys admins are doing but you can also use this for your own benefit and learning and if you have a situation like where you have to solve the issue like just I explained that you can do the imaging part then this is what you need and we'll come back to the point and the point is Wits event monitor I really love this if you click on it you have options right here and you can say you know what what do what do you want this software is telling you right now what do you want me to log do you want me to log system resources do you want me to log processes start when you click on something do you want me to even log the drivers that loads and unloads do you want me to log the logon sessions do you want me to log network shares? Do you want me to log network connections? I think this one is the most important one. And the scenario where I will give you right now is, let's say you have a machine that is being infected with a, with a malware or some virus. And you don't know what's going on. You know, you have done your things and you still think that there's something not right. When I click on the browser, something else runs in the background, but I can see it but how do I see it? this is the most like you know it's programmed that way is that when you click on the browser it opens in the background but it goes away and you just can't find it this will be the perfect thing to do is when you open the Wits event monitor and then you start monitoring you start looking at it and you open the browser let me, let me just open Firefox here I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh this as soon as I did that uh, you see that it logged every single thing that happened in that second okay when I click on refresh it talked to this IP address it talked to this address it, it was talking to the home address and everything that was just happening in that few seconds everything is logged right here you can then click on let's say for example that software that I was talking about that I can see and if it's like exe like this I'm just going to click on it let's say I'm going to click on something portable portable let's say I have this server which is portable server I'm just gonna go ahead and close everything and just go to my download and let's say this virus is downloaded to my uh, any folder and when I click on the IE this exe file runs bam it opened that server is open that virus is running under my computer and when I do that as you can see right here process HFS is started okay and its connection is right here if it was talking somewhere outside 
it will be pointing that IP address right here but it's local it's not showing that IP address but see how powerful this is when you do troubleshooting if you don't have something like this it will be really hard and if you didn't know anything about logging like this before now you know because now it's easy for you to just find out exactly what's going on then what you can do is you can click on the hfs.exe right here and you can find more information okay you see that this hfs.exe is started and it's exactly coming from this path right here so then you can go to your computer and delete it or now you know that this path is bad that this exe is targeting this path I can just go ahead and make a policy on other computers to the group policy and then you can block this exact same thing and that will save you from a lot of headache. So now that's what you call advanced troubleshooting where you do find things through logs but you can do other things to make your life easier by using other stuff like group policy stuff and things like that but the main idea behind this whole video was the logging part where you see things that's happening in real now that's an example of being in real but this can also help you but like for example everything that is happening in the back right now can be saved to a log file and that is extremely important even if you're running some different type of situation where you have a, a service at night let's say this the site that you run on is it requires another service so at night time uh, or any other time this has to be working all 24 7 but you have an issue going on some weird issue going on and everything every time that you uh, come back in the morning uh, that service is stopped you could actually find exactly what's going on how does it how does it get start Did, does someone go on the site and do something where it start is it an automatic process that at night time that happens before this service gets stopped that would be perfect way to find out over here because now you could see what happened before this service got stopped it just didn't start out of nowhere maybe something happened before that and now you can investigate that to find a solution for it to be up and running for 24 7 here's another example that's happening right now is that let's say you have a new firewall you placed it in your company and you have a OneDrive running and OneDrive every time you open a OneDrive right here example is this I'm going to OneDrive open right here and this is the OneDrive file right here every time you drop something into OneDrive it syncs when it syncs it talks to the IP address which is right here it gives you an idea of what's going on with OneDrive OneDrive EXE is opening up it's talking to this IP address and then it syncs okay it will use some kind of sync process which I stopped right now but it's the same process so then you can find these IP addresses that you didn't know before that you were having trouble that people were calling you what's going on after firewall things are not syncing correctly and you're like scratching your head man I just put a lot of IP addresses maybe you're missing this exact IP address now you know that this was the IP address that you need to put in your firewall so you see how much time can you save by doing logging live logging like this that is related to system that will help you a lot of time a lot of sh a lot of headache and it did help for in my case I mean it helped me a lot in my experience but like I said this is not the only tool that I'm just saying that this will solve all the issues that advanced issues for you there could be other the softwares there are other softwares you just need to open your mind up that this is what you do when it comes to advanced troubleshooting your options for imaging, your options for copying, your op options for other things are gone when you have a situation that where someone tells you you really can do this image stuff because we're gonna lose some stuff and that's not how we're gonna do it we need to find a solution then this is what you need to do and of course if nothing works uh, at the end I mean the other person will know that okay we at least this person showed me logs we have went through all this stuff that now I'm okay with other stuff but this is how you do advanced troubleshooting guys hopefully you guys learned something from this and if you have other tools make sure you drop it in the comment area and tell us some examples or if you have a video that you want to share under this section and we will add your videos to our videos for this section on how to do some troubleshooting stuff because this is the most important part in IT that when you are good with troubleshooting you're always relaxed you're stress-free and you love your job. See you guys in a different video. This is Danish from jobsclashare.org.